has you have to truly understand what he has explained because it's truly revolutionary you know this is wow uh, it blew my my mind off and on, so the nice. question so so the question from but i have a question for you you i saw you switched your slides quite fast and one of them you said we still cannot apply genetic change to the brain right yes it was a little square thing yeah, it went yeah, so yeah. fast but when do you think this could come because this is truly revolutionary and it's very complex and i'm aware of that so when do you think this could, could because that's going to be the giant leap for for the world yeah absolutely yeah. you know the the biggest problem right now what we're facing is that Everything what I told you, we do this manipulation, gene therapy, we do in mice. But mice live like maybe a year, humans live like 18 years. And if we do a viral manipulation in the brain of a human, we have no clue what happens in two years or three years, whether these, these viruses start to jump, you know? And, and we have very often the situation in our mice that a gene jumps. You know, like something that we think is, is, is only in TH stained neurons, in thyro, uh, hydroxylate, tyrosine hydroxylase neurons, suddenly comes everywhere. So, so there's a lot of danger in, in, in applying gene therapy. And, and right now, people apply it to, the, to skin cancers or something like this. That's way harm, more harmless than going into the brain. And I think that's why Right now, the, the major obstacle is not the concept, it's not the techniques, it's the safety. How can we do the safety? And how can we monitor this? And, and, and because of this, we are not there yet. But I wanna give you one more inspiration here. And, and it, I think it lies in this slide. Look, this is epilepsy, and these are the different subgroups. Now, India has a huge potential because medicine in India has a long, long tradition. And this tradition is based on individual personalized medicine. So you have practiced personalized medicine way before Western civilization realized that not every patient is the same. So you have, are you very, very medicine, how, how are you? Are, are you very, Ayurveda medicine, you know, which actually is based exactly on this principle that you have different types of patients that respond differently to medicine. Now, it will be the biggest mistake of, of your generation to, to say, oh, this is traditional medicine, I don't want to use this, because it's a gold mine. And that could make you the leaders in, in medicine in the future if you can combine both. Because there will be truth in the subtypes that you can see, that the doctors can see. And a lot of Western people don't know this. They come to a patient and they say, uh, they can only measure, oh, you have fever. But you can look at a patient and say, you have fever because you're this type and this comes to me. But I think I, I really beg you to combine both in order to make a difference. Because you can build on thousands and thousands of years of tradition uh, that has been lost. You know, so, and, and people are doing this in this country. You know, they are doing gene type, uh, genotyping from the different uh, uh, types that, that your medicine dictates. And also you have a lot of medicine that is there and is functional. Again, it's a gold mine. So, so I'm actually envious that for, for you people from India because it's easy to learn the new technology, but it's not easy to, to, uh, to have all this traditional background. So. So you have huge opportunities. I think that, you know, you are right because in system of treatment of Ayurveda, yeah. in Ayurveda they classify the human into the three categories. Yeah. They, they call Vayu, Pitta and Kapha. Like yeah. that way they divide the three. And medicine they selected personalized medicine only that what exactly will one typical one person in one category they belong to that will may not work. That concept was 2000 and above the birth of Christ. So yeah. it is one of the a very important part of that that we are going to uh, not able to understand. And unfortunately, we are having the Ayurveda separate branches. Yeah. The problem of that, that neither 
the system of allopath medicine, modern medicine, what we can say, are approaching towards Ayurveda, not they are coming towards us. That's a big gap, and that's the reason India has not prospered as such in the medical sciences, when you have entered your country or in the US, what you say, we could not reach because we have restrained our resources by own, we borrow from you. Yeah. Each and everything in the instrumentation, laboratory, operation theater, practice, you do not use a single thing which is made of India or conceptual developed by India. Mm -hmm. All are Western in the world. The reason is that we have not done that things. Yeah. So that's the reason. You're not reason. proud of it. You know, maybe you're not I think that the way the Chinese system, I have seen in Chinese system yeah. of medicine, they get Nobel Prize in 2002 by the whole. Who got the Nobel Prize? Yeah. So they kept the culture alive. The medical schools, I have seen that they have the choice of the patients. They can go for methodology is the same, learning is the same. They also study the molecular biology, the genetics, before going to surgery, medicine, and anything. But they have a choice of therapy. Patients have a choice. Yes. where they should go. Doctors also have a choice where they should practice. This is the way the Western country and Eastern country are separated. Well, actually China is doing a great job. They are actually assembling it. That's the reason that China is ahead of us. One of the reasons is like that. If you see the world, go and visit, you will understand why it is like that. I really thanks to Professor John Marino Ramirez. We know his name. I think my students, my dear students, whoever here, you might have seen in your life, you can tell that one of the greatest neurological surgery professor in your life. Oh, my a God. professor of University of Washington, chair, director, <laughs> It's a great opportunity to meet him and see him and know his work. I think you just take your mobile, click his name. Neo Ramirez. And see how many videos are there on his name, his interviews are available. So you can understand before coming and before learning, any scholar or any professor, when you see, you must see the background, what he has done, and what is the work he has done. It is not only the subject we teach, and the moment we go out, we forget. The patient is in front of us, we treat. The moment patient goes, we forget. There is the research is not like that. Is a continuous process. A neurosurgeon, when he becomes a researcher, he does not forget his patient. You might have seen each of the patient he has recorded, he knows ins and outs. That's the difference between a general practitioner and a researcher, medical researcher. I hope what Nino has said and given the message, all of you will think in a little lateral way. Plain thinking anyone can induce, lateral thinking you need your own. And the young generation must have that. I think the archaic brain is more important. <laughs> so archaic brain should be used to think in archaic, and then you will be different than others. So thank you very much for patient hearing for one of the greatest neurological surgery professor in the art. You have seen it. Thank you very much.